welcome to my so bliss today i'm going to show you how to make this darling little pencil pouch it could also be used for crayons makeup brushes really the possibilities are endless and this is going to be the first tutorial in a series of three for three different pencil pouches in celebrating our back to school season so i'm super excited about it make sure to stay tuned in all week to see all the different pencil pouches that i'll be making this is our first one it rolls up so if you were laying it on the table, it would roll up just like this. And then you have ribbon that you wrap it around and tie it. And now you just have this really cool little pouch. And I have crayons in this one right now, but now I'm going to make one that is going to be used for pencils or possibly makeup brushes even. So I just love how versatile it is. And this project is perfect for beginner sewists. It's really quick and simple. So let's get started. Now, the first thing that you're going to need is your fabric. I'm going to be using this canvas fabric, but really you could use canvas, cotton, um, any sturdy fabric that's going to hold up really well. You don't want it to have a stretch to it. I have three pieces that measure eight inches tall by 17 inches wide. And the great thing about this project is you can make it whatever size you want. This is the size that I decided on for um, pencils or color pencils or markers um, or makeup brushes, like I said before. So I really like this size for it. I'm also going to be using a piece of flannel um, or interfacing. This is like some flannel interfacing actually that is going to go in between. Again, that is an eight by 17 piece. And then I'm just going to need some ribbon so that we can tie off the ends. Um, two pieces that are about 10 inches long should work great. This piece is about half of an inch wide. I think I'm going to try this quarter inch wide that I already have on hand that I think will look really nice with this fabric. So any kind of ribbon that holds up really well will work so that we can tie it together. And then you're just going to need your basic sewing supplies. Now for our first step, I'm going to take one of my fabric pieces and I'm going to fold it in half wrong sides together. So the raw edges are matching up at the bottom. The fold is right on the top up here. And then I'm going to take it over to my ironing board and just iron that down. After I have that piece ironed, next I'm going to take it and fold it in half and find the center of it. So I'll just mark mine with a little pin. So that I can measure my lines next around that. So I'll open it back up, fix my pin. There we go. Okay, so there's the middle of mine. And depending on what you're using yours for is how often you want to space the pockets that will hold the markers or pencils or whatever you're going to have it hold. So typically it's about an inch apart. So I would start here in the middle and draw a line and then an inch out from that I would draw another line and then an inch this other way. So to the right, to the left, I would go an inch, an inch, an inch all the way down. Um, now, I did grab one of my makeup brushes in case I wanted to use this as a makeup brush holder as well. And it's going to be a little bit bigger, so if I wanted to fit those, I would do an inch and a half. So, I'm thinking for this one, I'll do a couple that are an inch and a half wide. That way, I'll have an opening that is an inch and a half wide, and then maybe another one, and then a couple more inch wide ones. Um, so, let me show you what I'm talking about. So... I can take that pin out now that I know exactly where it is. And I'm gonna draw a line. So that's gonna be my reference point right there. And so like I said before, I'm gonna go for one of them. I'm gonna go an inch and a half from that line. So there's my center line, inch and a half out. I'll draw another line. Do it again. Inch and a half. Draw a line. Now I could continue going all the way down if I wanted to, but because I only have a few big brushes and maybe I'll use this for pencils or scissors or something like that, I'm gonna do it at an inch now. So that way I can get a mixture of different things in here. So then I'll just go all the way to the edge Okay. 
And then I'll just flip this around and do the other side. So now I'm gonna take this, I'll set it up here for a second and get another piece of fabric and my interfacing or flannel, whatever you're using, either one will work. And I'm gonna start lay layering them together. So first I'm gonna have my flannel or interfacing piece and then I'm gonna put with wrong side facing down, so facing on top of the interfacing or flannel, I'll put a fabric piece on top of that. And then I'm gonna take my pocket piece that we just drew lines on and lay that on top. And I'm gonna line up the raw edges on the bottom and the sides. If you have a little excess on the sides, that's okay. We can cut that off later. But really you wanna make sure the bottom is lined up. So now I'm gonna pin those all together. So once you have those layers pinned together, you should have three layers. So I have the pocket, the fabric, and then the interfacing or the flannel. I'm gonna take it over to my sewing machine and starting with the middle line, I'm gonna start at the top of the pocket and stitch and then back stitch and then stitch all the way down and back stitch again. So creating the pocket and then I'll just go um, one on the right, one on the left and just kind of go alternating. I feel like that stitches it better and makes it so the fabric doesn't shift as much um, and makes it a little more even. So I'm gonna go sew that down now. Now one thing I like to do, instead of cutting my threads right here, I just pivot over to the next line. It's just gonna save me time and save me thread. But I still do back stitching at the top and the bottom. Once I have all my lines sewn, I'm gonna go through and trim all these threads. Next, we're ready to attach the ribbon. So I'm going to lay it right above the pocket and right on top of the fabric. I'm just gonna lay the pieces right next to each other. And I'll pin those in place. Mine are pretty slippery and thin, so we don't want them moving around because now we can take them over to our sewing machine and at a quarter of an inch, I'm gonna sew those on really well, back stitching a few times just to make sure they're really secure. After we have our ribbon sewn on, we then take our last piece of fabric and I'm gonna put it right sides together, right on top of what we just sewed. And I'm gonna leave those ribbon right in the middle and I'll just go around and pin those corners down, pin my edges together, matching everything up and make sure it's just laying nice and flat. So then now I'm gonna take this over to my sewing machine and sew this piece of fabric on to the other layers that we already have sewn together. And to do that, I wanna start on the side that doesn't have the ribbon. So this side of mine doesn't have the ribbon and I will just start right here and at a quarter of an inch, I'm just gonna stitch all the way around the edge, pivot at the corner, come down, pivot again, and continue, and then stop over here. Make sure you're back stitching at the beginning and the end, and again, that's at a quarter of an inch. Now, real quick, I wanted to show you how I pivot. So I just stitched down one long edge, and I've left my needle down, and I'll bring my presser foot up and turn my fabric so that now I'm ready to sew down this short edge. So then I'll just put my presser foot back down and continue sewing down. And then I'll do the exact same thing once I get to this other corner. I'm gonna leave my needle down, pick up my presser foot, turn my fabric, and then press her foot down again and continue sewing. Once that's sewn, and before I turn it right sides out, I'm gonna come over to my corners and clip those corners. I'm not clipping through the stitching we just did, I'm just clipping right to it. I'm just clipping the corners off so that they'll turn nicely and really lay nice once we turn them right sides out. And if your fabric is really thick, I'm gonna kind of grade mine a little bit 
take out some of that bolt leading up to it. Um, but that's not necessary, especially if you have a thinner fabric. So now I'm ready to turn mine right sides out. And we left this opening. And I think it's just so convenient. We have our little um, ribbons that we can just pull to turn ours right side out. And I like to get my point turner and make sure I really press those corners out so that it just looks and lays really nicely. My fabric is pretty bulky, so it takes a little bit more pressing and messing with it. But there we go. So now I'm going to iron that down and just make sure it looks really nice. Here I have mine pressed pretty nicely. Um, now I just need to finish off this opening right here. And what I like to do is I just like to tuck those raw edges under about a quarter of an inch. If you need to do a little more, you can, don't worry about that. Um, and I'm gonna iron that flat and pin it together so that it's ready to be sewn together. So again, mine's pretty thick, so I might have to do one side at a time. So I'll take it, fold it under like that, iron that side, and once that one looks nice, then I can go do this side, tuck it in, make sure it's even so it looks nice on those edges. Make sure that corner is tucked in. And since my fabric is really thick, I'm gonna take my pins and pin that together just to hold it there until I stitch it down. But now I'm gonna take it over to my sewing machine and I'm gonna start right here at this corner and just top stitch about um, an eighth to a quarter of an inch from the edge. And I'm gonna start here and then go up and then just go all the way around the bag. And that'll just give it a really nice finish. So just make sure it's pressed really nicely before you head over to your machine. Then once you're done top stitching, you are all done with your pencil case. So then you could just grab some pencils, I'll put that in the smaller one, markers. I can even put my sewing scissors um, and some sewing tools in there. And it's just the perfect little travel case, um, perfect for storing in a desk at school or carrying in a backpack. And you just have to roll up the edge that doesn't have the ribbon. And then you take one ribbon, wrap it around, and then tie it in a knot or a bow with the other ribbon. And you just have this cute little pencil pouch. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Make sure to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe. Don't forget to check out those other two videos on how to make two other pencil pouches that I will put links for down below and in the iCard. If you want to see any more tips and tricks, make sure to check out my Instagram at mysobliss. And I will see you guys next time. Bye!